Many dynamics and relationships have changed in Family Guy over the years, and that includes the interactions between Meg and Chris Griffin. While Meg and Chris were shown to fight and bicker like one would expect brothers and sisters to do, they also had a lot of heart-to-heart -heart moments as the series progressed. In Episode 6 of the first season, The Sun Also Draws, we see the first time the two really connected. Chris explained to Meg about how he didn't want to be involved with the Scouts anymore and wanted to focus on drawing instead. Meg, I don't want to be in the Scouts anymore. I just want to draw. Meg replied by encouraging Chris to tell the truth to their father. They had another moment in Season 2 in He's Too Sexy for His Fat when Meg, in an effort to boost Chris's confidence, commented that he looked like he had lost weight. Wow, Chris, did you lose weight? Um, maybe. I, I've been working out. Both of these instances were small, but they laid the groundwork for how Meg and Chris did hold some sort of affection for one another. Unfortunately, this snowballed into the wrong sort of affection in later seasons. While Meg and Chris initially began as squabbling siblings, a simple mistake on Halloween made it warp into something else. Now, it isn't either Meg or Chris's fault that they were picked for a game of seven minutes in heaven. After all, Meg and Chris were both disguising themselves to avoid harassment from their peers. Ugly bitches! No! So, it's understandable that they wouldn't recognize each other, especially in a dark closet where being anonymous was encouraged. Their reactions upon seeing each other out of their costumes implied this would be an unsettling one-off incident, but in typical fashion of the show, that wouldn't be the case. This was used as a gag and background for these two characters. In a few short scenes, they had mentioned practicing to kiss, Hey Chris, you want to practice kissing again? had showered together, Chris, our bath is ready and were walked in on by the temporary nanny as they played doctor. No kissing, under bed. The twisted relationship even reached into some major storylines. In high school English, Meg portrayed a neglected wife that fell for Chris during the retelling of Of Mice and Men. Well, hello there. If it isn't the sexy imbecile. There are some that may argue that this use of them in as almost love interest didn't mean anything as the story wasn't part of the official arcs of these characters. However, we have to argue that these stories generally follow keeping certain couples or potential couples together, with Peter and Lois generally being the romantic leads. This was also used in the episode Trading Places, when Lois and Peter argued that being a kid was easier than being an adult. You kids switch places with your dad and me. For the next week, you'll be the parents and we'll be the kids. Leading to Meg and Chris switching places with them for the week. With Peter and Lois taking their place as students, Meg took up being a housewife with Chris as the breadwinner of the family. Meg and Chris could have easily treated each other the same despite how the roles changed, but instead they easily took to using pet names for one another and addressing each other as though they were in fact married. Well, I'm off to work at the brewery. Okay, have a good day, honey. This occurred once again when Lois and Peter decided to ditch their oldest children to live in a complex with a bunch of hipsters. Once Meg and Chris found out what their parents were up to, they posed as a couple in order to get Peter and Lois to admit defeat. So, you two just moved to the complex. <laughs> what did you say your names were again? I'm Dylan, and this is my wife, Dylan. The bond between these two didn't really start to flourish in any sort of way until after these disturbing interactions began. Though Meg and Chris were happy to indulge in each other's company, as though they were a normal couple, they also generally behaved as regular brothers and sisters would, which made for a confusing setup. This confusion also helped to fuel Meg's speech in Seahorse Seashell Party. When she turned on Chris, Meg expressed how she could use a brother to help make her feel safe and loved. She snapped that she didn't appreciate Chris joining in with Peter and Lois to Abuser. This is what I'm talking about. This is a perfect example. You're my brother. You're supposed to be on my side, and you're such a bastard to me. This also resulted in Chris making the declaration that he faked all of his orgasms. I faked all my orgasms! Which was a clear indication that by this point in the series, they had obviously hooked up during more than the Halloween episode. Their dynamic would ping pong back and forth, with the two of them refusing to acknowledge one another outside of family gatherings and the two of them indulging in their need for intimate connection. On top of that, they also had moments where they showed similar coping mechanisms to deal with how things were at home, one of the most upsetting of which being when they were seen ripping out their own hair together. What do we do? What we always do. I'm in charge of my head, that much I know! When Chris was found stealing from Lois's purse, Meg decided to use the opportunity to blackmail Chris into doing whatever she wanted. Some of those tasks were harmless enough, with Chris going to pick up Meg's mail and sitting and watching movies with her. Other jobs Meg tried to make him do, however, were disturbing, and it was really no wonder why Chris decided to run away from home for a while to live with Mr. Herbert, who in the right mind would ask their brother to call girls pretending to be an aborted fetus. Here are the pictures of every girl in your class who went in. Alright, good. 
Now I want you to call them as if you're their dead baby. Chris didn't have any story where he turned the tables and blackmailed Meg as she had him. What's all this stuff? Stuff I stole from the old folks' home. But you should see how they treat me. Whenever Chris came across Meg doing something messed up, she typically explained her side of things in a way that roped Chris into whatever she was doing at the time. When Chris found a room full of things she stole from the residents at the nursing home, he went from scolding her to teaming up in less than a minute. Meg, that's no excuse. Stealing is just plain, oh my god, is that someone else's glasses? And when Lois and Peter were trapped in a cutaway land, they decided to enjoy themselves by acting as though they were in a feel-good comedy. When Stewie's head had been cracked open, Meg and Chris had chosen to work together to hide the injury from their parents in an effort to stay out of trouble. In Friends Without Benefits, Meg's attraction to Kent bled over into her odd relationship with Chris, leading to Meg asking her brother to sleep with a jock and tell her all about it so she could live through Chris's experience. Chris, please just sleep with Kent and then tell me all about it. Forget it, Meg. I can't just do stuff with another guy. When Chris hadn't complied and Meg decided to drug him, she only snapped out of it because of a kind act that Chris did for her. Seeing the picture Chris held on to made Meg realize how much he appreciated her, even though on the surface they never really show much regard for each other. When Meg joined a roller derby team, Chris had first gone to her games just to have an excuse to oogle her teammates, but changed his tune when he saw how brutal the games could be. Wow, this is a lot more physical than I thought. He had tried to talk Meg out of playing in any more games, trying to explain that all it would take was one mistake for her life to be ruined. I mean, all it would take is one bad hit to do permanent damage. When Meg disregarded her brother's worries, Chris decided to launch himself in the way of Meg being crushed, trying to save her from being hurt. In the D in Apartment 23, Meg and Chris teamed up in an all-out brawl against their peers when pushed too far. Not only was this fight satisfying to watch, but it perfectly displayed that when push came to shove, Meg and Chris were able to make a formidable team. They had been outnumbered and outmatched, but their moves were in sync, and so it was easy for them to work around and with each other. In one of the most recent episodes in Season 20, Meg fully fell into a pit of delusion that was born out of her loneliness. After meeting a young teen named Seymour, Meg decided to be his getaway driver, planning places to rob before fleeing from the police in a fashion that caused a lot of destruction and more than a few deaths. Chris, having eavesdropped on Meg discussing a robbery, decided to try and help her. In the final scenes, after Meg crashed a car into Peter, Chris leapt into action and used a moment to show her that Seymour wasn't real. Meg, there never was a Seymour. Chris had been following his sister to see what she had been doing, only to grow more and more concerned when Meg seemed to be trapped in her own little world. Not only did Chris Chris assured he would help Meg to get help, but he demanded she flee so he could take her place in the car in order to cover for her. It's difficult to say for sure how their relationship will change as the show goes on. One can only hope that the two will eventually learn how to care for one another without sleeping together. But being the Family Guy universe, it's difficult to know what to expect. That's a run-through of Meg and Chris's strange relationship. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to check out some of our other videos through the end screens above. Until next time, take care.